Greetings, nerds. This is Cena Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont, and with me as always is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very well, sir. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing fine. That's yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> I I can't I don't know what it is about May right now, but May I'm so used to having all of these finales for shows. Mm-hmm. And um that I just I, I feel like May is the new March almost. It's yeah. just, there's something very sluggish happening and slumpish. <laughs> I, it, you, you know, you're right. I, I don't, you know, it, it seems like, like you said, with the shows being on the you know, pandemic schedule and, and then, you know, we had such amazing shows out, out of the gate. This, mm-hmm. At the beginning of the year, you know, thinking about WandaVision, and then we moved into Falcon and Winter Soldier, and it was, you know, borne out this you know, by the, I know it was fan voting, but, you know, the fans love those shows. I mean, it cleaned up last night with the MTV Music Awards, for example. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, so I could, I totally get that, what you mean by, like, how things are kind of, like, in a, in a slog as far as TV, because even, even other things like Invincible and, and Jupiter's, Legacy and other things. It just seems like everything's kind of stopped right now, and it's just kind of like we're kind of in a holding pattern with the Arrowverse shows. So, but yeah, I know we'll get into it more. Yeah, especially because some of them took like these weird breaks. Mm-hmm. And continued yeah, to do <laughs> about to take another weird break. <laughs> we got so spoiled with the Marvel shows because not only are they Marvel, but there were no breaks in mm-hmm. between them. Mm-hmm. And and so it was just six or ten episodes done. Yeah. <laughs> like consistent content. But yeah. um speaking about Marvel, Marvel's Secret Invasion has hired two directors and plans on starting to film in the fall. That is that's great. I mean, the last time they had two directors, well not the last time, but the Russo brothers. Yeah. Marvel yeah. does good with two. <laughs> they do they do well with two. I know even like with our with uh with the the T V shows, I think. Uh yeah. most of them were you you know, had co directors throughout the se- you know, throughout the season, which I guess does build good continuity in, in storytelling and, and, and theme. So yeah, I mean I'm all I'm I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, so I guess it's uh, Thomas Veshka who was uh, he helmed a film called Let Him Go, and then Ali a a Salim who worked on a show on Hulu uh, called The Looming Tower are the two people who were slated to to direct. And then of course you know we got the news as far as Olivia Coleman, Amelia Clark, uh, Kingsley Ben Adair who was you know part of. Uh, Last night in Miami, and of course, you know Samuel L. Jackson and Ben Mendelsohn coming back. So it's, it, it looks like you know we have an amazing cast. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing how the the scrolls um, do their they do their secret invasion as it's followed up from Captain Marvel. Not so secret anymore. I hate to break it to them. Yep. I hate to break it. The secrecy is out the window. It is. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking about. Things that I thought were were already out in the world. Um, this is us is ending next year, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That was announced a while ago. It was announced a while ago, and then I think he just confirmed it. That I guess it, I guess all the upfronts are starting to come down for the networks, and so this is one of the ones that was part of NBC's lineup announcements last week. Right. Yeah, right. and then also interesting with that inter- that that lineup announcement with NBC, um, for the first time in like fifty years, they are not going to have a half hour comedy on their mm-hmm. primetime fall lineup. Hmm. Wow. Fifty years. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought that was pretty interesting when I when I saw that um, that that was that, that was the case. Hmm? Um, is dead. The comedy yeah. sitcom is dead. Yeah, no more laugh track, y'all. <laughs> no more laugh track. No more. You know. You know. Um. No, this is us. I 
I I feel like back when it first premiered, it was the showrunner talked about it being five seasons. Mm-hmm. Um, and mainly, he didn't say this, but I thought it um, mainly because when you cast Sterling K. Brown, um, you can only have that man for so long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> they didn't, I don't think they anticipated for him to blow up right before the, because um, the People versus OJ happened, like, I want to say the the TV season right before This Is Us. And yeah. so he was coming off of that, and then to be on a TV show and for This Is Us to hit the way it did, it was just like a perfect per- perfect storm for that yeah. guy. So, yeah, yeah, yeah it is it is definitely, it's been a rocky season. It's mm. definitely had some really high episodes and some episodes which I've completely forgotten about. Um, but um, I think it's all because of COVID, and we'll see what happens during that final season. Yes, yep, we will. We will. Um, <sighs> Snake Eyes trailer dropped. I did watch this. Okay. Will. I cannot for the life of me remember anything from the trailer. <laughs> This is it's, the, the important thing to remember is ninjas. That's all you need to remember. Uh, and just amazing, amazing martial arts work that makes Mortal Kombat. It, the, you know, the, the, the one minute trailer uh, for, for Snake Eyes to me, just I can only imagine the amazing work that's going to be displayed in that film when we see it in July. Right, right. Yeah, I, but I, I remember the splits at one point, mm-hmm. and that's about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, the splits, but yeah, you know, I, I, yeah, as far as the G.I. Joe film universe, I, you know, I saw the first one, I, I tried to watch the second one, but this seems to be a, a reboot for the character because it really is an origin story about Snake Eyes and about him before he, he lost his voice and how he became part of the Arashkinist clan, ninja clan and it and is based, you know, I think, um, you know, I think they were, you know, did get some good story beats from the uh, comic book writer from years ago, Larry Hama, who was very integral in crafting the whole, the whole backstory and mythos and art for, for Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow, uh, who's also going to be in this film. So, it I I'm looking forward to this. This this is one that I'm like, okay, we got this. We got Shang Chi. We you know we we got some good martial art films coming out here this, in 2021. I am feeling feeling very it's, underwhelmed by so much, and I didn't yeah. even pay attention to the MTV Movie Awards last night. Um, I I know that I I kept hearing that um, what's her name crushed it. I can like. Leslie? Leslie Jones, yeah. I did watch a little bit of it. I I didn't catch all of it. Yeah. So so what were the big takeaways? Big takeaways. As as I noted uh, when we started tonight, the Falcon and Winter Soldier and and WandaVision were like the big winners for the night. Uh, Best show was WandaVision. Uh, But it was interesting. I, I was actually... Looking at the other shows in the category, and uh, so it was like Bridgerton and Cobra Kai, Emily in Paris, and The Boys. So I was, I was, you know, I guess it's that I think it's the recency because the maybe why WandaVision topped The Boys. Because if you were asking me, I would have voted for The Boys, right? So I think it, but then again, I think that. The boys is targeted almost at a more "quote unquote" mature audience. True, true. So I think more likely the people who actually voted on these things probably were allowed to watch *WandaVision*. <laughs> true. <laughs> Not so much the boys. <laughs> yeah. True. True. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Fair point. Fair point. Uh, the best movie, interestingly enough, was uh, *To All the Boys, Always and Forever*. And again, I think yeah, definitely hold my previous statement very strong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the other cat- movies in that category were well, the Borat sequel, um, Benefits, Once Glorious Nation of Kazakhstan, 
Judah and the Black Messiah, Promising Young Woman, and Soul were the other film, other um, films yeah. in that category. So, yeah. So they stick to you. I think your point's spot on. <laughs> I've never seen a trend here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Chadwick Boseman, of course, one for Ma Rainey. Uh, you know, so correct. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, Lizzie Olsen, one for best performance in a show. She beat it. WandaVision, obviously, beat out Anna Taylor Joy, Elliot Page for. Umbrella Academy, uh, Emma Corrin for The Crown, and uh, Michaela uh, Cole, Cole, Cole for I May Destroy You. Uh, Anthony Mackie won for Best Hero, beat out Jack Quaid, El Gado, uh, Pe- Pedro, and Tanoa Paris. And um, Pedro yeah. was nominated for Best Hero? Yeah. And for Mandalorian, yeah. Not for Wonder, oh, Wonder, okay. not for Wonder Woman 84. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Got <laughs> Mando. Mando. Got, Got it. Yeah. <laughs> Why not Baby Yoda? That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. And of course, best villain was Catherine Hahn. Uh beat out Aya Cash, uh Ewan McGregor for Birds of Prey, um, Giancarlo Esposito for Mando, and Nicholas Holt for the Great. That's so weird how they mix up the TV shows with the movies. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. Strange. It is very strange. I, I, I guess it. it yeah, it, you. I guess they're really going for the hot properties as far as when they mix them up. But uh, yeah, but you know, it was it was overall overall good show. And I did when I did watch it, I, I saw the um, when uh, Wanda Vision won for best fight, uh, Agatha versus Wanda, um, and so the, it was so Lizzie and. Olsen and, and Catherine Hahn came out on stage and did like a little pa- pantomime kind of uh, fight sequence uh, it, to, in, in front of the audience. My son looked at me and he was like, you find this funny? Because, you know, the crowd was eating it up and laughing. He, he did not find it funny. I, I, I found it hilarious. But, you know, <laughs> I guess I was like, like hey. us on the inside know exactly what's happening. So exactly. We- yeah. <laughs> right now, when you're older. <laughs> yep. When you're older. When you're older, my. When you're older, older we'll talk about how it was. Yep. <laughs> you're all along. Yeah. Um. Oh man. So what else we got? We do have some CW shows to talk about. Um. That woman is on track. Will. Yeah. It, I. Yeah. I really this episode, the way it was structured. And the ending, I was like, okay, this is the writer's room that I'm familiar with. I don't mm-hmm. know where they fell asleep. I don't know what happened. Um, but I finally th- I feel as if the people who brought us the first season are back. Yeah. Yeah. I, I There are some things about the end that I they went there. They and, they really did. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, you know, and it's something. I know we speaking of other shows we we talked about this spring and, and winter, you know the the whole black trauma thing. And so, I I, I liked the episode. I, you know there were part right. there were parts of it that I was I, I kind of was drifting off a bit with some of the with some of the snake bite things, but yeah. yes. Um. But the 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 how you know how it started out with um, with the you know continuing the theme of you know the, that of police misconduct mm-hmm. in, in Gotham, and I'm glad that they're 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 carrying that storyline throughout the, the season and not not abandoning it and and I know sometimes you know I did feel like the scene in at the at Ryan's establishment was a bit on the nose, but right. but it but it but it made the point, um, and really set up a really solid scene. And when when Ryan and Luke were in the jail cell together, right? I I agree. I honestly I don't know what happened, but I feel like I looked away from the TV for one minute, and the next thing I know, they were in jail. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yep, that's <laughs> actually Wait, I, I, what? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm piecing together what happened. I'm I'm not gonna go back and watch the actual scene. I, I get it. I get what they're doing, but um I like how 
the writers, they're able to craft. And, and yes, that was a bit on the nose. I agree with to the point where I was very like, wait, what just happened? Mm -hmm. um, but I like the ending because I didn't see the ending coming. Yeah. And I like where that pushes the the story for forward more. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I'm, I was I I'm also glad that Sophie is finally like screw the crows I'm done, mm -hmm. um, just in time for all of this to happen, because yeah. it it kind of I don't know what this is gonna do and how this might affect that decision or future decisions, um, and and they they played into that trope of like the heroes figuring out that their love life will always be kind of a, go come second to mm -hmm. saving the city. And um, I, I thought it was interesting how, how Ryan, even though she's been in the picking up the, um, been in the cow for, for a while, she, she's just now figuring out that, Oh, I have this other identity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I am. I am Ryan by day, and I can't pick. Um, I thought it was interesting how at the beginning, when Luke came in about the zombie attack, she she said, "Oh, let let the um, crows handle that problem." Mm -hmm. Yeah, but but heroes don't get to pick the problems. Nope, nope, you don't. Um, and and I wonder if they're going to bring that up again because I don't know if she learned that lesson in this episode. I don't, yeah, I think they probably will, because I agree with you. I think that, especially the way things unfolded uh, when she was in the church and the, and the um, crows came in, guns blazing. You know, they didn't give, they didn't give the, the, the bad batch snake bite victims a chance uh, at all. They, you know, where I think, you know, Ryan was really, was, they had the antidote and so they were you know trying to get it to the all the victims but the crows just came in and and mowed the place down and to your point i think it it will reinforce the the lesson that you just shared which is heroes don't get to choose right right you you definitely don't um and and this, I why can't I remember the officer's name? From uh, uh, is it Terranova? Ter Terno it's a yeah. very strange last name. Yeah, like I, I think it's like Terranova. Like I think about, yeah, and apparently this character is actually this officer is actually. I was reading earlier today that uh, he is based off of the supervillain in the Bat uh, Batman comics, and actually is uh, Luke. Luke Fox's nemesis um, when Luke becomes Batwing. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I like how they're they're kind of he he's been always he's always been quite a dick, but mm -hmm. yeah. I I like how they kind of are making his presence more and more stronger. Mm -hmm. You know, and kind of building him up. And and I like that he's also not. He he's very much a nemesis for Sophie. Yeah. And and they're making that really clear, and that's that's something that's been interesting this season is that everyone kind of is getting their own nemesis, mm -hmm. and um, and it's not. It's not all about one hero. It's it's these different things, and at the same time, they're not just like putting everybody in a suit. Right. That was shade at thrown at the Flash, but <laughs> <laughs> throw as much shade as you want. <laughs> so so I I don't know I I I really like this episode because I thought overall everything that they've been setting up they they pulled in. Bits that were dropped in previous episodes, mm -hmm. pulled it together here. The um, did you cry when Mary was yelling at Jacob? I did not cry. 
<laughs> it, it didn't it didn't move me that much this week, but it, it but it, it definitely um you know, you know, I think to your point about how this this episode really started pulling bits together and so uh Jacob and and Mary's you know, incident situation in the in the clinic uh you know, I think that story is fully coming full circle and of course uh, you know, we we see this we got to have a redemption arc in these shows. And I think you know, Jacob's the one this season with the whole snake bite addiction and, and then seeing Mary's clinic and how good beneficial it is to the city. So I think, you know, so I think that's what we're, you know, he's, he's the character that's going to get that particular arc this, this season. Hmm. That's an interesting call. Well, we'll, we'll see how they redeem him, especially with Sophie's. Right. Journey. And I, that's going to be the next. That's going to be the next story beat to drop because, yeah. uh, because clearly he, there's some institutional ra- racism within the crows. I mean, just seeing how they uh, reacted to her uh, right. before, you know, before this, and then, and then after the fact, and then you know, Terra Nova's comment, you know, you know, you need to go wash the jail stench off of you and stuff. It, it was. It, it, it he may have said that to a, a white colleague, but at the same time, uh, given the given the how they have shown the crows to act all season, uh, it it definitely get, they're they're not the the white knights in Gotham, unlike you know where they were trying to. They're just as bad as the Gotham PD as far as some of the some of the practices that they engage in, and and and, and I think Sophie had to confront that, especially as far as how she how she treated Ryan, right? Um, early on, because you know I think that was a, and that was a very smart thing that the writers did because it you know it it was another African American in the police system carrying forward some of the unjust practices, so. You know, so it, you know, so it added some nuance to the story that it's not always white cop shooting down black man. You know, it could easily be, you know, it's you know, it's it's more the institutional ish aspects of things than than uh, not always the color of skin. Hmm. So I like the way, yeah. So and now seeing it come forward with Sophie's resignation from the crows, she recognizes that. So I, yeah. I like I like the way they they um, you know. I know we had some rough spots with this show midway through, but mm-hmm. they are, it seems the things, this episode really did build on a lot of good work that they built, even in those rough episodes. Yeah. I, um, I'm glad we got rid of White Mask. Yes. Um, but I, but I'm sad that they brought back Ocean. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Alice. No. <laughs> I just God, that, that, was, that, that part was like okay fast forward <laughs> yeah I was very confused especially when she's in the subway and and granted my mind was constantly thinking how has nobody caught Alice at this point she just walks around without a mask in broad daylight yeah. doing yeah. her thing it's just very yeah. weird yeah. Um, but then out of nowhere Ocean comes in and is like oh I've been waiting for you I'm like what what the, what Oh my God! Stalker alert! Yeah. <laughs> um, and then he kills Doctor Rhyme, and I'm just I'm and he's talking about love and how Kate didn't love her and all of this stuff, and I'm just like, what kind of like who submitted fan fiction all of a sudden? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was the yeah that was my yeah so that was definitely like my my least favorite part of the episode. Uh, you know then. It did take me out a little bit because they have so many other good things going on, but that that aspect of it did take me out. Yeah, I I don't know. I initially when they started the ocean thing, I didn't mind it, but the more it comes, and especially when I have an episode without it, mm-hmm. I notice a difference, especially with Alice, Alice's like presence. And um, I think we've said this in the past. That you should not redeem Alice, right? That you in and having her be in a love affair kind of makes her more of an empathetic character, mm-hmm. and we don't need that for Alice. No, we don't <laughs> need that. C- we don't need that CW melodrama with her. <laughs> no, no, 
Put it on somebody else. Put it on somebody else. Yeah, I mean, you got it there with, looks like, with Ryan and Imani. You can do it there. <laughs> it's with Alice. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. It's going to be Ryan and Sophie. We know. We know. Yeah. We know eventually. how that works. Yeah, eventually. Yeah. <laughs> um, Speaking about CW shows, yeah. and my memory that I swear may just wipe clean. What happened on The Flash last week? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was, what happened on the Flash was wash, rinse, repeat. Yeah, I you know, I don't know where the, the, this Force War story has has been. Has oh, some, now I remember. Got yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's been disappointing. It started out well, I thought. Um, I, I was like, all right, the show is starting to get its footing. It, 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 you know, I've, it, and and recover from whatever that was from seasons four, five, and part of six. Um, but um, but then you know we got the frost, the killer frost junk as far as the trial, and then we get this force war story last week that it, you know I guess at the end of the day. We we again have we have a speedster as our villain, mm, yeah. and 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 this time it's just the speed force personified in the form of of Nora Allen, um, which you know the, the thing that bothered me about this episode, one of the things that bothered about me this episode, which I guess is good that it did elicit a, an emotional response in me and more than just man I'm done. But um, was how much energy they were focusing on trying to pro- prove Barry wrong again. Right. Yep. It was just like, we've seen this, we've seen this so many times before. Iris and Cisco will do the, the this time, throwing, imparting feelings on, on these entities, the, this, this energy that has taken people prisoner i mean at, at a score i mean what i don't know if it reanimated nor island's body or whatever that's another you know maybe it did i don't maybe it didn't maybe it just decided to come in that form but it seemed that the other three people were just were inhabited by these forces and barry's fault to rid them of those forces to save their lives given that one of them just got killed in the previous episode was a good idea to me so and then they get on this like you know it, you know it's it's like the you know how they would call hunters all they always call Hunter Zolomon Jay even though we know he's Hunter or or you know, other things and then Joe's analogy trying to do the parent analogy with you know you all created this and I'm just like it just seems so forced. Yeah, it doesn't. There wasn't anything that surprised. Mm-hmm. It, it kind of just seemed oh yeah we've deja vu and not in a good way yeah <laughs> there are some times when when these writers will put in things and make you think i mean how often did we say oh that reminded me so much of this marvel movie when mm-hmm. watching winter soldier or or falcon winter soldier and right. wandavision and it just but but that was in a good way Right. Or doing a retcon in a good way with with the Flash right now, it's kind of like no, we've seriously seen this season six times. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, we have. <laughs> um, we have. It is not a revolutionary idea to have to have a speedster personify one of Barry's parents and also be a bit evil. I I just yeah, yeah. I they it's. And then it's not a new idea for Cisco to suddenly not want to be on Team Flash. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Even I, I was just like, yeah, Carlos, yeah, which I was actually that that was the one surprising thing. I thought whenever we got the news that he was leaving the show, I thought that it was going to be one of those deals where it was going to be at the end of the season, and then uh, and then they'll be gone. But you know, they did set it up that they're he's 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 out the door. It looks like. Or midway at the midway point or so. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which could, or kill him. 
Why why are these writers so afraid to kill one of the team Flash members? Yeah, I yeah, I mean it, it would it definitely would be a change up. And and you could kill them and bring them back. I mean, heck, they've done it so many times before. Heck, Laura Lance anybody? Yeah. 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 Harrison, Harrison, Harrison. Actual Harrison Wells. Anyone? Anyone? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I take it back. Kill someone other than Wells. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Because you're very used to killing him off and bringing him back. But the the writers, we we talk about this all the time. So you already know what I'm going to say. They need to reestablish stakes. And the only way to do that is to kill somebody. They've got to, yeah. They have to, and they have to stay gone. Yeah, they have to stay gone. Because I, I don't know, so this episode in particular, I felt like Barry was off doing his own thing, and 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 I that was kind of their point. Like he's making all the wrong decisions, but I'm like, no, Barry's literally on a different show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. And it's very jarring to go from his scene to your scene, Iris, and just like, are you guys on the, are you living in the same central city? What did Crisis really do to this town? <laughs> yeah, what did it do to this town? What did it do to this relationship? Because they, yeah, it's just like, yeah, it, yeah, the, the, the stuff with, with Iris and Psych and, and Team Citizen, you know, I guess... I, I guess probably the problem is they focus, you know, one of the things that the show did really well in those early seasons was they really stuck to the comic book. Not, not that you, they, they, they had the comic book themes. Not, Cause I don't want to be one of these old heads who are like, Oh, you know, this is not like the comic book. It didn't do it this way. I, I, I'm not, that, I'm not saying that at all, but, but at the same time, they they used the source material and adapted it in a, in a in a good way with without too much of the melodrama and then third season it with with Savitar, the, the melodrama started dropping in and it just got thicker and thicker and thicker and to the mm-hmm. point now where it's just like it's baked into the dna it's baked into the show and and i just felt like this episode this past week was just really spinning they were just spinning their wheels yeah uh, and, you know, and because, you know, we, we brought Timeless Wells back earlier in the season so we could say goodbye to him. But, oh, no, we, we didn't have a, a fully satisfying goodbye. So we'll bring him back again so he and they can say another goodbye. And, <laughs> <laughs> and oh, yeah, and also so he can, like, show what he was looking at when they created the new the new Speed Force. Uh, that created the so you know there were things that like structurally there were some good elements there but it just got bogged down by repeating the same old things for once I would be like for once I wish they would just the rest of Cisco and Iris and everybody would just be like Barry you know what you were right this time mm-hmm. yeah no I I I'm, I need a surprise I need something yeah. was not expecting I, I mean. Something where I have these moments where I'm watching other TV shows mm. and they start off and I think I know where the episode's going and then I find that I'm just lost in watching the episode so I'm not thinking and and then the ending catches me off guard. I need yeah. that to happen with The Flash. Yeah, I need that too. I mean, that happened this week with Batwoman because, I mean, I should have seen it coming but I think they set, they did a good job of like, you know, with the carjack, you know, with the attempted carjacking and and all, whatever Luke reached for his phone, I, I guess, you know, I guess there was a moment where I was kind of like, don't do it. <laughs> Whenever he reached for the phone, I, yeah, I was like, oh, here it comes. And maybe it was just like, you know, real world events. Just I, I was just trying to like, please don't go there. But they did anyway. But yeah, so. Yeah, but you're right. I mean, I, I would like I would. What are the, one of the great things about this show early on was the the, the surprise element, and and it, we we just need to do that, and and just need to like mix it up, and, and not do these stories. And I guess it'll help now with 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 Carlos leaving that you know Cisco won't storm off and then come back. You know maybe maybe Chester will be the one. He will he will not be the one to be like coming back. And like, oh, everything's all good. 
I'm gonna help out Team Flash. Maybe Chester will be like, "No, Barry, I, this is stupid. No, I, this is this is dumb. I'm not supporting this." Or, you know, with, with having that having those having that wild card, and also maybe bringing in. I mean, I, I'm I'm hopeful, but also a little scared with the 150th episode with them bringing in both of their both of their kids. Um, yeah, I I mean, we have all we're in the right to be scared. <laughs> yeah. I or maybe this is a good thing. Let's lower everyone's expectations. Yeah, or maybe they just should have just kept Bart as Barry's grandson, and that would we would have been fine there, you know. <laughs> oh, this is not going to go well. <laughs> this is not going to go. Well. We've seen it again. We to our point that we have belabored well too long. We've seen this before with them having kids. That was season five. Do something different. Okay, now I'm I'm off my soapbox. So. Have some grandkids. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. We I, we could only go on for so much longer about this, and yet we have other episodes where we have twenty minute flash rants. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, but man. hey, but good news is Superman and Lois is back next week. So. Yes. Tuesday? Yep. Yep. Okay. So we'll probably have a different recording night then next week because Batwoman is gone until June 6th. Yep. For Batla- some odd reason. <laughs> yeah. It's gone until June 6th. Black Lightning actually will have a ser- series finale next Monday. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, y'all. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll probably restructure so we could talk to series finale of Black Lightning and Superman and Lois to change things up and and whatever. If y'all have some suggestions or something y'all like for us to to t- check out, show, throw it our way. Yes, yes. I I really recommend telling us what we need to be ch- checking out during the slump period. Most likely, we'll be back on Wednesday of next week to recap all of the shenanigans that are happening uh, with our shows that we love to hate. <laughs> <laughs> we hate to love. Um, on that note, Will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes, you can find me at Will M. Polk, W I L L M P O L K. And you can find me at S J Belmont, S J B E L M O N T. Please follow our crew on Twitter at Scene and Nerd, friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram. But most importantly, rate, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Google Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, Geek Out. You're welcome.